One of the things that we found worked for us in China, and I won't pretend this was necessarily a grand strategic long-term vision, it was perhaps a little bit of serendipity, um, was the fact that uh, Timberland had been planting trees in China for five years before we ever sold any product there. Um, Timberland has a long heritage of, uh, and a philosophy of, of trying to do good in our communities as well as doing well as a business. And as part of that, every Timberland employee gets 40 hours time off, of paid time, each year to volunteer in their communities. About 10 years ago, a bunch of employees in our Asia team decided they were going to adopt this desert, in the Kirchin Desert in Inner Mongolia, because of the fact that deforestation was causing dust storms and air pollution throughout not just China, but Northeast Asia in general. Um, and so working with an NGO, they'd been planting trees there for five years before we opened our first store uh, in 2005. And as a result, you know, we were able to very credibly point to our position, you know, point to our, our credentials as, a, as a, an authentic, sustainable outdoor brand. And that, I think, got us noticed in a way that perhaps wouldn't have been the case if we hadn't had that, that, that credibility, given that Timberland was a relatively new name to most people in China. Um, another thing that's worked for us, like a lot of brands, has been you know, finding partners. Um, we have more than 100 stores in China five years later, but that's all thanks to having found partners, distributors that we could work with who, would, who know how to open stores, know how to get the locations, uh, know how to run a business in China. Um, we found that's a faster route to enter a new market like China than if we we're trying to build the stores ourselves. I think one of the important things is to understand how environmental responsibility adds value for your consumer. Because if you understand that, obviously you can, you can build it into the price value equation. So at Timberland, we know our consumers care about the outdoors. Uh, so to some degree, it's, it's part, of, um, part of what makes our brand attractive to them. So we, th we think about it like we think about performance innovation. How can we build in more environmental features, if you like, into the products to make them more attractive and interesting to our consumers? And how do we do that for the right amount of investment in, in cost? So there's a few things we've learned, some of them the hard way. Uh, one of them is, of all the myriad things that we're doing from an environmental sustainability standpoint, carbon neutrality, organic recycled materials, um, there's only a few that consumers really resonate to or really care about. Um, there's a lot of stuff that it's just, it's just they, don't, they don't have time to think about. We've also found from a tone of voice standpoint, you've got to be really careful not to get too earnest and preachy when you're engaging with consumers. They, they don't, if a consumer's going to buy a pair of boots or pet, buy a jacket, they're not really looking to save the world. They really just want to go out, buy something that's going to make them look good, make a purchase, go home, get on with their lives. Uh, keep it simple, focus on stuff that is, is appealing to them, uh, be a little bit light-hearted about it, don't try and be doom and gloom and the world's coming to an end so you've got to do something. You know, just try to make it fun. Buy something, we'll plant a tree. The majority of our budget still goes through to what I would consider tr traditional media, TV, print, outdoor. But the majority of our effort and resources increasingly are going towards the, the non-conventional way. So where you spend your money doesn't necessarily reflect the amount of work that goes into building a brand globally. Uh, with a TV campaign, obviously, it takes some effort to make one ad. But once you've made, once you've made the ad, you, just, you, you book the media and off you go. With digital, um, the way we think about our digital presence is we're almost like a, a TV station or a publisher now. We have our site, we have microsites, we have our presence on all the various social media and we have to be constantly refreshing the content. Now, certainly from a, a geographic standpoint, uh, Asia and particularly China uh, is, is our growth, uh, a key driver of our growth. So fastest growing region within that China is the fastest growing market. We've been there five years, which is you know, a little bit later than, than some of the other companies in our space, and we're on a rapid, rapid growth trend. Um, so a big focus on building the organization, building the distribution, building the, the presence of the brand in China. Um, from a consumer standpoint, uh, the biggest uncharted territory for us is, perhaps surprisingly, women. <laughs> Timberland has been uh, forever a predominantly male brand, uh, and that's not because women aren't interested in or attracted to the Timberland brand. In fact, you know, a lot of the, what we stand for, the appeal of the outdoors, environmental responsibility, the reputation of the brand, uh, iconic New England outdoor brand, uh, is quite appealing to women. It's just we haven't been very good at making product they actually want to wear.